I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some trucking regulations and what came about in MAP 21. I'm here to spread some good news for you today. So um, I'm talk about the regulations a little bit that they've loosened up for the transportation of agricultural products and farm vehicles. Um, who has the, click, the clicker? Okay. All right. You've already heard about MAP 21. That was a large reauthorization bill that was signed by uh, President Obama back in July. It contained a lot of pieces of information, and one of those was uh, transportation of agricultural commodities and a, and a new criteria, which they call a covered farm vehicle. And so it's given you some new exemptions. Uh, these regulations took effect in Missouri in October of 2012. Missouri is an automatic adoption state of the federal regulations, so when they are codified into federal regulation, Missouri automatically adopts those under 307400, which is the Missouri statute. Now, I will give you a little caveat to that. Some of the surrounding states do not have the adoption process that Missouri does. So uh, they have been allowed by the federal government up to three years to adopt these regulations that I'm going to give you. So if you are an ag hauler or a covered farm vehicle and you're going to transport out of state for your business, for your farm, you need to make sure, and, and my suggestion would be to call that state that you're going into and talk to them to see if they are honoring these provisions. Most of the states around us are. There are some, though, that, like I said, have to walk it through their legislative process, and they can do that in a three-year period. Okay, MAP 21 for ag haulers contained two sections. Those two sections were uh, 32101, which was the transportation of ag commodities and farm supplies. This is basically going to apply to your for hire carriers that transport agricultural commodities. Uh, section uh, 32934 was it for covered farm vehicles. That's the new category that they just brought in with these regulations. It's new now that's going to cover probably most of you in this the audience today. And I'll explain each one of those. Well, throw out this caveat though, Missouri still has an exemption in place that will cover a lot of you, and that is if your vehicle is licensed with a farm tag for 42,000 pounds or less, and you operate wholly within the state of Missouri, you are exempt from the federal regulations. Okay, this is going to help you some when you go out of state and, and a little more in state. But if, like I said, if you're licensed for that 42,000 pounds or less, you're already exempt, so it's nothing new for you. Okay, 32101, like I said, it pertains to uh, for higher motor carriers, and it has to do with the hours of service or what you guys call the logbook regulations. It basically, and, and this was already in place. Um, the mileage, though, on it was 100 miles under the old rules, and they have now pushed this up to 150 miles. And basically, it, it applies to all carriers, whether you're transporting hazardous materials or not for higher carriers so they can be transporting anhydrous ammonia, anything like that that needs to go to the farm. And like I said, it deals strictly with the hours of service. It's in place year round because that's the planting and harvesting season in the state of Missouri is year round. What it does is it gives you a 150 mile radius if you're transporting any type of agricultural commodity from the source of the commodity to within 150 miles of the source, okay? It also has added the last two there, which talks about transporting an agricultural commodity or farm supply from a hotel or re wholesale or re retail distribution point to the farm or within 150 miles of that farm, okay? And then the last one was transporting the farm supplies for agricultural purposes from a uh, wholesale to retail distribution within 150 miles of that wholesale point. Like I said, that's not gonna affect the actual farmer themselves, but that is going to affect mainly the, those for higher carriers, uh, like your MFAs, things like that, that transport these type of commodities. They're not going to have to keep a logbook if they stay within that 150 mile radius. Okay, this is the one that's going to pertain probably to most of you, and that's the new section 32934 of MAP 21. It defines what a covered farm vehicle is now. That's completely new. There never has really been that definition before. But a covered farm vehicle is going to co cover that vehicle if it's operated by the farmer, the rancher, an employee, or a family member of that farmer or rancher. Okay? Has to be transporting farm supplies, commodities, 
that are your farm supplies that you're going to be using on the farm, okay? Can't do this as a for hire carrier because the other caveat that I'll show you at the bottom is you have to display the F sticker on your, on your license plate, the farm tag. And in Missouri, that does not allow you to haul for hire. Okay, so it will be your product. Okay, like I said earlier, if you have a, a license weight, and this is the difference between Missouri statute and the Fed statute. Missouri goes by license weight. The federal statutes go by gross vehicle weight rating. What they mean by gross vehicle weight rating is what that vehicle was rated for when it came out of the factory. All, all the vehicles have a sticker usually on the driver's door inside or on the door post that will tell you what that vehicle is rated for. That's the GVWR. It has nothing to do with license weight or anything. Okay, So if you have a GVWR of 26,000 and one or less and you operate anywhere now in the United States, you are exempt from the following federal regulations, which is uh, Part 382, which is your drug and alcohol testing, 383, which is your CDL requirements, 391, and that's just a portion of that. That's Part E of 391, which is your medical certificate. Everybody knows what a medical card is, which you had to have before. Your hours of service or your logbook, you're not exempt from 395, and you are exempt from 396, which is inspection, repair, and maintenance. Uh, the big one in that one is the uh, federal inspection that you would have to get if you were to go out of state transporting your farm supplies. Now, I will throw this in there just because you are exempt from these regulations statutorily. If you were to get involved in an accident or something like that, rest assured, liability-wise, you know, so it's important that you, you do keep your trucks in good running condition, even though that you are exempt from these regulations now. Okay. You still got to comply with Part 390. 390 is the markings, and I'll go into that a little more in detail here. But what I mean by markings is what you have on the side of your truck, okay, the requirement for that. The federal requirement for your marking is, is that you have the word USDOT followed by that number, okay, and the city or the name of your business. So if it's John Doe Farms, USDOT, and your number. And this is for out of state. If you're in state, wholly in state, hauling your product, you're not required to have a USDOT number, okay? So th these are the differences between inter and intrastate. Okay, and then three, 392 is the uh, safe operation of your motor vehicle. You still gotta comply with all the traffic laws. Um, DWIs, texting, yeah. <laughs> no texting while you're driving. Hands-free devices on your cell phones, you've gotta have those. Okay, those all still apply to you. And then 393 is the parts and accessories that you've got to have on your truck. You've got to have lights. You've got to have good tires. You've got to have brakes. Okay, those things all still have to be on that vehicle. Okay, for your bigger trucks, and this is interstate again, and then we'll talk a little bit about intrastate too, but for your bigger trucks, which is 26,001 or over, you can be operated anywhere in the state of Missouri and be exempt from these regulations, and you can operate interstate within 150 miles of the farm. So let's say you have a farm on the Illinois border over around Quincy. You could take your product from Hannibal into Quincy and not have a problem. If you went farther into Illinois, as long as you stay within that 150 miles, you're still exempt from those regulations. But at 151 miles, you have to comply, okay? And again, those are the uh, portions of the regulations that you have to, um, you're exempt from, okay? I talked about those earlier, 390, 392, and 393. Those are the federal statute numbers. Those still apply to you in interstate commerce, okay? Okay, they also apply to crop share agreements. So you can have a crop share agreement under a covered farm vehicle and still get those exemptions. Okay, the exemptions do not apply to the transportation of hazardous materials. So you cannot transport hazardous material as a covered farm vehicle and still get those exemptions. Okay, the only one that's still into play, but you're only gonna get one of those exemptions was the old one found in 49 CFR 383, which allowed you or exempted you from CDL requirements within 150 or 100 miles of the farm. That didn't put any caveat on whether you could transport hazardous materials or not, but if you have a hazardous material, you're not gonna get the exemptions on the rest of the regulations. So you just need to be aware if you transport any kind of hazardous material that's placardable, 
you're not going to get these regulations as or exemptions as a covered farm vehicle. Okay. Like I said earlier, you cannot use a farm plated vehicle in a for hire operation. It has to be used strictly for the farm for an agricultural uh, commodity. One of the things I'll throw up here too that we've discussed: um, cut timber or lumber currently is not defined as an agricultural commodity in the state of Missouri. So you cannot haul cut lumber on a farm tag. Okay, and I know we get a lot of questions about that particular uh, commodity, and that is currently not allowed because it's not, not a farm commodity, not defined as one in the Missouri statute. Okay, like I said earlier, 42,000 pounds or less, and you stay in the state of Missouri, you don't have to worry about any of these anyway because you've been exempted for quite some time and you are still exempted. Okay. All right. One of the things they asked me to talk a little bit about here was the markings of a commercial motor vehicle. I know that's always a question that we get at my office and I'm going to give you two different sets of regulations because when you're talking about markings, you talk about the federal regulation and you talk about the state law. Okay. If you are 42,000 pounds, or less in the state of Missouri, you only have to comply with the state statute. The state statute in Missouri, 301, 330, says you must have the name of the farm or the name of the business, the city of operation, and the word local on the side of that truck displayed on one side. Okay, that's Missouri state statute. If you have to comply with the federal regulations, and what I mean by that is to say you operate interstate then you fall under 390 of the federal regulations, and that, that's when you have to have a US DOT number, okay? And on that side of that truck, you would have to have the name of, of the farm and the letters US DOT followed by the number that's assigned to you, okay? It's a, it's a number that's free of charge. They just basically use it to track your movement, okay? And those are the two sets of regulations different. Map 21 did nothing for, and I don't know if you guys know what IFTA and IRP is, but it did nothing for the IFTA or the international fuel tax. That's not included in there. So if you've got a vehicle that you operate across state lines and it has a GVWR of over 26, weighs over 26, or has three axles on the power unit, you're still required to get IFTA or to buy a trip permit when you go into an adjoining state. Okay, that's just basically the old heavy use fuel tax. Uh, you can do IFTA and you can buy it by the year, St sticker on the side of your truck, and you will pay quarterly to those states that you operate in based off the amount of miles that you travel in their state. If you only go to the other state rarely, you can purchase trip permits. Missouri trip permits are good for 72 hours. For fuel, it's just $10. So you're good for 72 hours, $10 in the state of Missouri if you were an out-of-state carrier coming in. Some of the other states are a little higher. I know Illinois charges a little more than that for their for their fuel permits, but that that are that is the regulations that have changed for farmers. So you see, they have loosened up uh, quite a few of these regulations on on farmers, especially the covered farm vehicle. It allows you guys to be able to, to transport your product uh, without having to comply with all of the regulations that a normal interstate trucking company would. Okay. Anybody have any questions for me on that? Okay. I, got one. I used to milk cattle. Go to Kansas and get hay and come back. Right. I was based. My, I had my. Okay. I used to go to Kansas and get hay and come back. Okay. Feed my milk cow. Okay. I had a Missouri base plate. Okay. And I had to buy a permit to get back into the state, a fuel permit to get back into the state, even though I was licensed. Yeah, you, yes, you actually should have had the fuel permit before you went out of state. And then once you come, yeah, once you come back in state, you're required to have that fuel permit now also because you've been out of state. And the reason they do that is for those vehicles that operate uh, or, or operate on the border so they don't go across the state lines and buy all their fuel and come back across. It's been that way for a long time. And that's the only reason that, that I can think of that they do that. But that's why you had to have that fuel permit when you came back in. The reason I asked you said you didn't have to buy them. You didn't, on your IFTA, if you was out of state, you had to buy it coming in. 
but if, if I was in state, I still had to. But you were coming from an interstate trip back in. You were in Kansas, coming back into Missouri. So you're an interstate carrier. That's why you had to buy it coming back in. You, I mean, I would like a little bit of clarification. You said any cut product of lumber products. Are you talking about logs that we cut off a farm and take to a if, mill? If you're, yes, you're, if you're running a logging business, cutting them off the farm and taking them to the mill, that is currently not an agricultural commodity in the state of Missouri for the farm tag. Okay? You cannot run a farm tag on that. Now, let's say you're cutting fence and you've got to remove some trees to do that and you've got some logs that you're going to take from the farm somewhere else. You can do that on a farm tag, but you cannot run a logging operation on a farm tag. There is already a special tag for the logging operation. All right. I have local log license on my trucks. Right. Yep. Do I have to carry medical cards, hours of operation, all these things, or are we still considered agriculture, or what's the situation? You don't have the farm tag, so you would have to, to carry that stuff. How big are your trucks? Uh, How big are your trucks? Wheelers, okay, yeah, you're over the 26,000 GVWR. You're considered a commercial motor vehicle. Yes, you would have to carry medical card, all that stuff, because you cannot display the F tag. And that's the only thing that these regulations under the covered farm vehicle do is allow you when you're displaying that F tag. So now we're required to carry hours of operation and everything. Well, else. now it depends on how far you go out. I guess we need to d discuss how how far you're going to go out from that particular. We're bit. not going over a hundred. Then no, you're not. You're considered a local carrier at that point. Anything less than a hundred miles, you're not required to carry logbook hours of service anyway. Those exemptions are still in place. So all we need to do is carry a CDL, or we have to have a chauffeur's license, CDL license. CDL license, medical card. We do have to have a medical card. If you did not hold the old chauffeur's license prior to May 13th of 1988 in the state of Missouri, yes, you do. I've had one longer. Then, then. You're, you're grandfathered in. All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I got a question. We haul a lot of hay. We run a lot of cattle. We haul a lot of hay with overwinter mints. And on the old way from there, you go buy one inch, or you don't have to buy one inch free. But why can we not run on an interstate with Missouri overweight or overweight from there? You know, it, it says you can't run on 44, you can't run on 70. But some of the roads you have to, we run up North Missouri. We don't go out of state anymore, we just run North Missouri. Sure. But, some of the roads you have to get on an interstate to get back on another road. Now, what is the reason we can't get on the interstate? Okay, with a permit, you should be able to get on the interstate. It's without the permit that you can't get on the interstate, but that you are allowed to run on secondary roads over short distances in the state of Missouri. Okay, and, okay. and the, reason you have, the and reason you have to have the permit on the interstate is because that is a federal regulation. Those regulations are set by the federal government and they require a permit anytime you get on there with a, with a load that's over eight and a half feet wide. Well, the permit says, it, it says on there though that it, it's not by you know, in a, on you should, uh, you should be able to run on the interstate with a permit if you're permitted to do so. Like I said, the only time you don't need a permit for hauling hay or for uh, agricultural commodities is on those secondary roads where you're traveling short distances from farm to farm you know, those type of things. You don't have to have a permit for that. The interstate requires the permit. Uh, my employees have CDLs and medical certificates, but what you're saying, they don't have to have that now? No, sir, they do not. Okay, but we do have to have the F on the license plate. You have to have an F sticker to do that, yes. Okay, because I've asked in the last two years, they said, you don't need that because your license takes are non apportioned so we know your farm but does that mean i need to go back into the license bureau and tell them i need to get the f's and put on there well you need the f stickers yes that that is part of these regulations and if you're running the the, the uh, f sticker you should have it i mean i know the registration probably says it but it says it has to be marked on the outside so law enforcement knows that's what you're doing so the f sticker is a part of that 
Some states don't offer the F sticker like Iowa, so they had to carry a letter with them in their truck indicating that it's a covered farm vehicle. Missouri offers that F sticker and the Department of Revenue or the license offices throughout the state. If you're a farm vehicle and you want the F sticker, you should be getting it. Thank you. We were a little confused back here on the uh, CDL license. You got a 10 wheeler, you're 54,000. And like 18 wheelers, a lot of us have our own trucks that haul just the local elevators 10, 15 miles away. Do we need CDLs on a farm tag? No. If you're in, if you've got a farm tag, farm stickered vehicle anywhere in the state of Missouri, you were exempt from those regulations that I told you. So anywhere in the state, you would not have to do drug and alcohol testing, CDL, medical, hours of service, and vehicle maintenance and repair. Okay. Thank and you. You're welcome. I think I misunderstood you earlier. You said something about if you were in 150 air miles of your home base, but was just four or five miles into Illinois, you were exempt from what? I, I didn't understand what was exempt from. Okay. If you're an interest, if you're going interstate with your cover, are we doing a covered farm vehicle here? A vehicle that's got covered a covered farm vehicle, okay. uh, eighty thousand pounds uh, semi, and I'm running in Illinois delivering beans or corn within four or five miles. You can go 150 miles in Illinois from your farm. So if your farm sets, let's say Hannibal, okay, and you can go 150 miles from your farm into the state of Illinois and still be exempt. But if you go 151 miles, you're no longer exempt. But I, I still need IFTA and DOT numbers. You would need IFTA and DOT number, yes, that's correct. Those are two things that they did not exempt you out from in this particular regulation. IFTA had nothing to do with MAP 21, and 390 was one of those statutes that I read to you that they did not exempt you from. Partly the reason they did that is when they put these regulations in place, they want to have the ability to track some of these interstate carriers to see what your involvement is in crashes. If you're a farm vehicle, F sticker on that license plate, you don't need to worry about the 150 unless you get out of state. You're, you're free to go anywhere in the state of Missouri, okay, without hours of service. So that was, would be the exemption that best fits you if you're an F sticker, okay? If you have an F sticker on your vehicle, you can't take the other exemption because those are normally for higher carriers and you can't run for hire on an F sticker, okay? So your best bet would be to use, if you've got the F sticker on your license plate, to use the covered farm vehicle exemption, which opts you out of of hours of service anywhere in the state of Missouri, whether it's 200 miles away or not. Right. And the other, the other question is a little different. Uh, some of the local fee offices are saying that on renewal, it's kind of a moot point now at the end of February, but the, uh, the renewals are due by the end of February. And uh, that's been the case for many, many years now. But in the past couple of years, some of the local fee officers are saying that, that some of your all's officers are stopping people after the 15th of February and telling us that you're, you're overdue, you need to get reduced now. And they're giving, they were given tickets for that and everything. Yeah, and if they, if they were given tickets for that, they should have went to court because that's not the case. The farm sticker is good till the end of February. March 1st is the enforcement date. That's what our people should do for enforcement purposes. If you've got any questions like that at the time when that ticket's issued or something, you know, give the local troop a call. Let, let them know that something like that's happened so that that, that can be rectified at the time. No, they have to honor what we give. Yes, so that, I mean, same as like a, a, a can, some Kansas trailers don't have to have license plates on them. Every trailer basically in Missouri, with the exception of very few, have to have plates on them. We honor that. Uh, no plate on those trailers in Kansas because we couldn't make them get a plate if their home state won't issue them one. Same with Kansas. They couldn't write you for an expired license plate if the state of Missouri is not going to issue you one until March 1. Okay, and we get a lot of those questions with your guys' 18,000 pound license plate. When you go out of state, you get stopped because it's on the front of the truck versus the rear of the truck. <laughs> state statute requires that license plate to be on the front of that truck. And the other state cannot tell you where to put that license plate because Missouri statute specifically says it must be on the front of the truck. Now, I don't say that you tell the officer that right off the bat because, yeah, <laughs> some, sometimes that could go south real quick. But what, 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 I have seen, what I have seen folks do in the past is they just get a copy of the Missouri statute they stick it in the glove box of their truck and they highlight that portion. 
And if they get stopped, they say, sir, if you don't mind me showing, you know, here's where Missouri requires that license plate to be displayed. Again, we can only do so much with the out, you know, the out of state folks, but that's where it needs to go. Any other questions? Well, and that's been a, yeah, that's been kind of a, that's been kind of a source of confusion, I think, a little bit. Back in the day when that statute was created, those hay trailers that were on there were created for uh, transportation behind tractors or vehicles that go from field to field, farm to farm. Nowadays, you know as well as I do, farm operations have expanded, and these folks are, are transporting uh, that the hay from state to state on some of these trailers, you know, again, I, and this is the way we've kind of looked at it. If you're using it strictly around the farm, like a hay trailer, and you're transporting from field to field or within a few miles of the farm, not going to need to be licensed. But if you're running an interstate hay operation where you're transporting hay from, from one state to another, yes, because that was never the intent of that statute. And we have spoken to the Department of Revenue about that on their licensing and you know they were in agreement with that uh, portion of the the hay trailer does i mean does that answer your question well, so it depends I, specifically the one i was asking about these newer ones that don't come now that manufacturer told me they didn't need to be licensed sure the manufacturer gonna tell you that because he's trying to sell you a trailer but he, he, he yeah <laughs> Yeah, he needs to make sure that he's aware of the Missouri statute before they tell